So if you guys have been following the channel at all for any amount of time, you know I'm a huge fan of mirrorless cameras. Uh, pretty much all the cameras I have, and there's probably like seven, eight bodies in here, are mirrorless cameras with the exception of one DSLR, which honestly I probably haven't used in like two to three months. I'm recording this now on Nikon Z6 mirrorless camera. So, I mean, mirrorless is the future. I firmly believe that. However, there are a lot of reasons why DSLRs still matter and why this Nikon D6 matters. So even in 2020, which is probably when this camera is gonna come out, I really believe there's a lot of reasons why Nikon should consider this camera and that we should take it seriously. And so feel free to sound off in the comments below if you disagree, but hear me out. I think I've got some points on this that we should absolutely consider. So literally as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm gonna be booking some tickets to Iceland and it is the first time I have ever been going out there. Kind of a dream destination for me and probably for everybody. So if you guys have ever been, uh, if you live there, anything like that, let me know. Um, I'll, we'll meet up when we're there. It should be a lot of fun, but we'll do a bunch of shoots out there. So I'm really excited about that. But let's talk about this D6 because yeah, Nikon sent out a press release um, earlier last week and they left pretty much everything up to the imagination, which a lot of people have kind of schooled them on and they deserve every bit of that because that was, they probably should have announced something with it, whether it was a resolution, speed, something that kind of got you excited about the camera. But I kind of wish they had something to go on with this camera. But I've seen a, a lot of articles and videos that say um, the D6 is either not relevant or the camera nobody cares about, um, or even that the D6 is really just about this Olympics and Nikon showing up before the Olympics. But I really believe there's a lot more to it and that there's a lot of reasons that a lot of people will actually want to get this camera and should get this camera. So without really knowing anything about it, what we do know is that it will be built like a tank. And the D5 has always been like that. And we're not hiding under a bush here. We all know that the best mirrorless alternative to these cameras is going to be Sony's A9. And we might even see an A9 II by then. So we'll see what comes from that. But right now the A9 offers just unbelievable autofocus performance, 20 frames per second, zero blackout. It's just unbelievably a joy to shoot with um, for these kind of situations, sports and wildlife specifically, nobody else is rivaling their AF system, especially in good light. And in bad light, some DSLRs might be a little bit better, but certainly in good light, the Sony system is way above. And the being able to shoot 20 frames per second without any mirrorless blackout is just absolutely unbelievable. However, Sony does not seem focused on build and ergonomics. And this is something that Nikon's D series and Canon's 1DX, I've taken very seriously. So basically any attempt to get the camera easier to handle, to give you the buttons that you need, to be able to use them with gloves, to be able to give you the right cards that you might need, quick access out, um, all, all this kind of stuff that you would expect on pro end cameras is going to be there. If you're using this in extreme temperatures, if you're using this in extreme conditions, dust, uh, heat, I've had my Sony's overheat several times. My A7R4 just overheated on me like a week or two ago. Should have that review up really soon, so that should be fun. But um, yeah, these are issues that other cameras have experienced and Canon's 1DX and Nikon's D6 or the future D6 just will not have issues in this area. So if this is a concern to you, and it is for a lot of sports and wildlife, documentary, uh, just kind of adventure photographers, this is gonna be a camera to take seriously because you might need those. And if these are things you need, it is gonna be very important. And they do come at a larger size. However, most of these people are using, you know, 400, 600 millimeter lenses. You're gonna be using a monopod or a tripod with those. And so having a larger camera that kind of balances out and handles really well in your hand is gonna be very important and more important than that small body style. I wish that for Sony's A9, they went with a different body style given the market application. They didn't. Uh, and so that's what we're stuck with is these two choices and two kind of different cameras and how they handle with size and ergonomics. Now, kind of along those same lines, if you've ever used a mirrorless camera, uh, Nikon series that I'm using to record this with Sony's Canon is the only one who seems to have figured this out right now. You will get dust on your sensor pretty much every time you change out that lens. It's it just an attraction point. Every time you open that lens up, you open up the entire sensor is exposed to dust. Now, it shouldn't have to be this way, but the reality is only Canons right now have anything that covers that sensor 
in a mirrorless camera. So for now, if you want to avoid that, a DSLR, it's not impervious. I mean, you can still get dust on the sensor, but it is blocked by a mirror and that helps shield quite a bit of things from happening. Dust, moisture, if you're changing your lenses out. I mean, deserts, cold, snow, rain, anything like that. It is much easier and safer to do it with a DSLR or Canon mirrorless. Uh, if only they gave us a sports mirrorless camera, we'd be set. That's the reality right now. So I think for people who are in this, this is gonna be important and this is something to consider. And this is the reality just right now. And I do wanna talk about autofocus because it does matter a lot. While Sony probably has a hands up on autofocus right now with their Sony A9, uh, the reality is that both Nikon and Canon do not have autofocus systems in their mirrorless cameras that really compete with their DSLR systems. So Nikon's D6 or D5 even is gonna be better autofocus technology than what you're gonna find on their Z series cameras that I'm using right now. And for now, that is a limitation. And this is kind of their first generation of on-sensor phase detection in a full-frame camera. So uh, it might take them a couple years to generate that kind of technology. Sony's been at it for like six years at least. So for right now, if you're using a Nikon camera, you're going to want the best autofocus performance you can buy. And for now, it is going to be in a DSLR. The D5 is probably one of the best and the D6 will probably be even better than that. Now, there are some things about that that we need to talk about a little bit later, but it, for now, if you are using a camera and you want the best autofocus performance from a Nikon camera, you are going to want a DSLR. And the last big thing is going to be lenses, and this is just another reality point. If you're using Nikon's mirrorless cameras, you're going to have to adapt all of their other lenses, and most people are not going to want to adapt lenses. So if you want the most options right now for sports and wildlife photographers, um, even Sony, who put out a couple of good ones right now, is still lacking in that lens department compared to Canon and Nikon. Again, it might have enough that you're set, but if you really want the best range of lenses, you're still looking at Canon and Nikon DSLRs. And so for these photographers that already have access because of contracts or they already own these lenses or rental departments that are on site, they're going to want a camera that works natively with the most amount of lenses and the lenses that they need to get the job done. And you probably do want a Nikon F-mount DSLR if you want to be able to shoot with long telephoto lenses and just the most variety and options when it comes to sports and wildlife style lenses. But with that said, Nikon can't just deliver another D5 and expect it to be good because there are just so many advantages to some of the systems that are in mirrorless cameras and the D5 can't ignore them. However, one of the best things about a DSLR is you can turn any DSLR into a mirrorless camera. You just flip up that mirror and automatically it is a mirrorless camera. You are using it the same way. You can have the exact same features. Even an EVF can be attached to like a hot shoe mount or something like that. But for everything else, there is absolutely no excuse for having mirrorless style features. And here's some of the Nikon D6 is gonna need. So first we are going to need live view AF performance. It doesn't suck. I mean, for right now, all of their past DSLRs in live view, the autofocus performance is just about unusable. The Z6 and Z7 have made that usable. They've added some features to that. It's gotten better. It's still not the best in the market. However, it is good enough to use in most environments. If Nikon can at least use the same technology from their Z series cameras, in the D6, or maybe even make it a little bit better since they have some nicer processors, I'm assuming, then we will be set. You'll be able to use your camera in live view, get extremely good autofocus because that's gonna allow you to get edge to edge corner autofocus. So that even on the edges of the frame, you can be autofocusing there. DSLR autofocus systems just do not allow edge to edge autofocus technology. However, with their mirrorless on phase detection AF system on the sensor, there is no excuse for having both of those technologies inside this one camera. So if Nikon can get that right and we have good autofocus in live view, let's talk about some of the doors that that opens up here. Cause again, that DSLR can be a mirrorless camera. So now we can enable something like silent shooting and that will, it's actually present on most Nikon DSLRs now, but if they can actually amp up their autofocus technology with that and maybe even speed up the readouts on the sensor, then hopefully that becomes more usable. And then now we can use silent shooting for things uh, that might require silent environments like 
press conferences and things like that where we can still get reliable autofocus, silent shooting, uh, no rolling shutter in that mode, at least for slower moving subjects inside of a DSLR that also gives you all of the advantages to Nikon's Pro and DSLRs. There's no reason we can't have both. Also, you're seeing this in a lot of cameras now is a raw burst mode. Um, again, this is usually in live view. Even the Canon M6, which is really like an entry level camera that we previewed last week, has this and can shoot 30 frames per second raw. And that's an entry level camera and it can do 30 frames per second in this raw burst mode for like two, three seconds. Nikon can absolutely beat that. Again, assuming we have good autofocus performance in that live view, we could maybe shoot off like 60 frames per second for two to three seconds, which would be amazing to be able to get raw images that fast for these short bursts. That would be unbelievable. And would to get that in addition to all of the DSLR features with Nikon F mount would be absolutely amazing. Again, you don't have to give up one for the other. There is no reason we can't have both. On the ergonomic side, I do think that Nikon should consider a tilt screen on this. You have a lot of pro-end photographers who are holding up their cameras like this, just spraying it down. They can't see anything. Uh, there's no way to do that. Well, if you have live view where they can see the screen and still get good autofocus performance and maybe even shooting these raw burst modes, imagine doing that and being able to see your subject by having that screen flip down. That would be amazing. There's no reason they can't add that. I've seen some people say a flip out screen can be damaged, but for sure, if they make it flip and just rotate a little bit, they can make that system very dependable and very good, even in rough environments. And the last here is going to be video. And we can absolutely see 4K, probably at 60 frames per second on this. With the amount of processors and things in this camera, there is no reason that this can't take video to the next level. Combine that with autofocus performance in live view, a tilt screen, if not a flip screen, and you can have an unbelievable video camera with all the jacks and ability that you would want from anything that you can use in virtually every environment. Again, a DSLR can also be a mirrorless camera by flipping up that mirror and the best for video. In fact, when we tried out the 90D and the M6 from Canon last week, their 90D, which is a DSLR, beat their mirrorless camera in every way for video, even though you have to use that in live view, which is like the mirrorless mode. So just because it is a DSLR doesn't mean it can't have better features, better ergonomics, and all kinds of uh, less overheating and things like that that will allow it to be better for video than any mirrorless camera on the market. So let me know if you guys agree or disagree. Sound off in the comments. Hit me up on social if you want to. Those are my thoughts. I think this is absolutely a camera we should consider. I think this is probably the end of DSLRs after this. I think we'll start to see them go in about two to three years. However, this is a big release for Nikon. It will matter for years to come, and this might be the last DSLR that is made in this kind of high end. So I think it's gonna be a very important one for Nikon and something that you should absolutely consider and push. And you should probably consider buying one if this is a market for you, because there is going to be most likely nothing that meets all of these needs from you from like Sony, and we'll have to see what Canon does with this one. But even if we get an A9 II, there are a lot of needs that will not be met by something other than something like this D6. So again, let me know your comments below. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you soon in a new video.